the Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent, Glow Coat, present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Man and Billy Mills Orchestra. <music> Fibber and Molly join us in a moment. When you put on a self-polishing floor wax on your floors, linoleum, you want it to last as long as possible, don't you? Well, listen to this. Because it's water repellent, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat now lasts up to four times longer. It's easy to understand why. Glow coat just doesn't dissolve whenever water touches it. When you wipe up spilled things, tracked in mud or snow, spilled food or drinks, you don't wipe up the wax. Glow coat stays on, stays bright, even after repeated damp mopping. You get more for your money in every drop because Johnson's glow coat is now positively water repellent. That's why it lasts up to four times longer. And think of the work you save. You don't have to do your floors nearly so often. Water repellent glow coat is still in the regular glow coat package, remember. No change at all in the container, but what a wonderful difference inside. Get glow coat tomorrow. Often around this time, we take you to 79 Wistful Vista. This week, for a change, let's all gather at 82 Wistful Vista, under that big dead oak tree in the yard, and listen to the conversation between the local tree surgeon and the lady who lives across the street from Fibber McGee and Molly. $65 to take that tree down? Oh, that's murder. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mrs. Clammer, but that's the cheapest I can do it. That's a big tree. Well, it's got to come out of there, but I can't afford that kind of money. What am I going to do? Well, I don't know. Unless you run across some yokel who'll cut it down just for the firewood in it or something. Firewood? Yeah, you'd have to be an awful sucker to take on a deal like that. A real 18-carat knucklehead. <laughs> hmm. An 18-carat knucklehead. Uh-huh. Huh. Whew. Isn't this a break, Molly? Firewood enough to last all winter. <laughs> and all I got to do is cut it down. How am I doing, kiddo? Wonderful, dearie. You've only been at it 40 minutes, and you've already chipped the bark in two places. <laughs> that last smack with the axe jarred a few acorns down out of it, too. Wonder what kind of a tree this is. Spruce? No, dear, you only find acorns. Oh, hello, Mrs. Clammer. Hello, Mrs. McGee. How's your little tin woodman coming along? <laughs> Fine, thank you. He's just like lightning with that axe. Really? Yes, he never strikes twice in the same place. <laughs> this is a pretty tough hunk of trunk you got here, Clammy. I used to have a top sergeant with a softer bark than this baby. <laughs> what kind of tree is it? Uh, that's oak, Mr. McGee. Well, it's oak with me, too, but what kind of a tree? Oh! <laughs> an, an oak tree, eh? Yes, and you know, I sort of hate to see that old tree fall, really. Well, stick around a few hours. Maybe it won't. <laughs> You've heard all the old legends about it, of course. How the James boys rode through here, and how Jesse James was supposed to have buried some bank loot under this very tree. Heard it? My gosh, I dug up this entire lot one day looking for it. <laughs> Three times. I'm thorough. <laughs> Matter of fact, I took 200 bucks out of here on the deal, too. Really? You found $200? No, he didn't find anything. He just spread the story around the Elks Club and then rushed back here and rented out shovels. Yeah. <laughs> Dollar an hour for the shovels, plus half of all the fishing worms they dug up. But this ain't getting the tree cut down. Stand back, kids. Here we go again. <sighs> Whew. Any chips fly out of it that time? No. Just a blue jay and two woodpeckers, dearie. Wouldn't you have better luck, Mr. McGee, if you turned the axe around and chopped with the edge instead of the back? Huh? Oh! <laughs> I thought it seemed awful dull there. <laughs> yes, it seems awfully dull here, too. Uh, I'll see you later. Okay, Clammy. 
Uh, hey, when I get this tree cut through, is there any particular way you want it to fall? Uh, yes, uh, down. Oh. Uh, bye, Mrs. McGee. Goodbye, oh, Mrs. Clammer. So long, Clammer. You think you'll get this job finished before dark, dearie? That's an awful small act for such a big tree. Well, I phoned the hardware store to send over a big saw, see? And when that gets here, I'll really get going. I'll stand back now. Let me take another whack at it. Careful now. Don't strain a muscle, dear. Ooh, uh, oh, my gosh. I busted something in my leg. Molly, I busted a ligament. Oh, oh dear. Let me pull up my pant leg. You see anything? A busted ligament? Do your ligaments have brass clips on the end of them? Because otherwise, that was your garter. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Feels better already. I thought for... Uh, hello, Mr. McGee. It's me, Herbert Tapple. Oh, hello, Herbert. Oh, hi, Herbert. They told me you called up for a saw, so I rushed right over here with it. Fine. There it is. It's a cross cut. A what's cut? A cross cut saw. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the kind I wanted, Herb. Swell. Heavenly days, what a wicked looking thing. I haven't seen so many ugly looking teeth since Uncle Dennis brought his home in a handkerchief election day. <laughs> Well, thanks for the fast service, Herb. You really got it over here quick. Oh, that's okay, Mr. McGee. I was going to stop Flunch on the way, but I decided it was Twirly Tweet. <laughs> twirly? Tweet? Yes, uh, as I always say, there's no use tweet if you ain't tungry. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's a very good saying, Herbert. Yeah, you keep on saying that. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I, I'm a little worried, though, losing my appetite this way. It was fine a couple of hours ago. Really? Your appetite was good two hours ago. Oh, yeah, it was terrific. I went out and date scrambled eggs and bacon and darns juice and uh, smuffins. My gosh, you ate all that alone? Oh, no, I had a cup of coffee with it. Oh. Well, I better get back to work now. It's late. It's long. <laughs> Well, let me see now. I wonder which is the best end of this saw to grab it by. Well, offhand, dearie, I'd say grab the end that has a handle on it. Oh. Or is that too daring a thought? No, but that's the trouble. There's handles on both ends. My arms aren't long enough. Oh, hi, Oli. Hello, Oli. Hello, Mrs. <laughs> well, McGee, what you fixing to make a yak ass out of yourself? <laughs> I'm going to cut this tree down for firewood, Oli. Well, don't stood there looking at it, McGee. You don't cut down oak tree with eyeballs. So far, you don't cut down oak tree, period. <laughs> well, you shouldn't send boy to do man's job, Mrs. Grab the saw, McGee. I grab other end. I show you how real woodman works. Oh, good. Yeah? Oh, swell, Oli. Which is the best end? I'll take that. With a cross-cut saw, McGee, it's no best end. Huh? Only good end is the end you put on a stump while you sit and watch two other fellas work. <laughs> Come on, Lacey. I, I show you how. I used to know all about this stuff, of course. Worked in a lumberyard. I was foreman in a lumberyard myself. Worked out west, too, cutting down cottonwoods. I cut down redwoods myself, big ones. I knew Paul Bunyan personally myself. He was my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a lumberjack... I was a lumberjack, too. Boss lumberjack. Mm. Look, now, if you two lumberjacks don't stop yakking and start lumbering, you're, you'll be here all night. Uh, now get to work, the two of you. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra and Charlie, my boy.
Fritz. And this is really work, ain't it, Ollie? Yeah, sure, yes, McGee. Yeah. I haven't seen a tree down for a long time. You mean saw the tree down, Ollie? Oh, thanks, Marcus. And I told my missus I saw McGee tear a cover on the pool table at the Elks Club, and she tells me I mean seen. Huh? So, and I saw, I don't know if I'm seeing or sawing. <laughs> huh? Takes time to learn yourself to speak good grammar, Ollie. <laughs> I had quite a time with it myself. As it is, I'm mistook quite frequent for a college guy. Not by any other college guy, you aren't. <laughs> Ollie, how's your family? All well? Oh, fine, thanks, missus. All but my wife's brother's little kid, Classy Svensson. He's got a little torture strap. Strap? My gosh, that's no fun, Ollie. What kind of strap? Uh, measles. Huh? He, he strap off his undershirt, and under undershirt is measles. <laughs> now I can't go home for five days because the house has just been guaranteed. Ollie, quarantine. Sure. <laughs> What did you say the kid's name was, Ollie? Classy, that's an odd moniker. Well, when he was born, McGee, uh -huh. you see, his papa didn't know what name to put on him. Uh -huh. So somebody says, stick your finger inside the telephone book, and where finger hits, you get a name. Oh. So papa's finger points to the word classified. Classified Svensson. Oh. <laughs> Very amusing, Ollie, but this ain't getting this tree sawed down. You want to take one into the saw with Ollie, Molly? Lots of fun, good, healthy exercise. You're sweet, dearie. But sawing down oak trees is a spectator sport for me. Oh. I'll sit here and read True Story magazine. True Story? Yeah, there's a story here about Whistle Vista, and if you boys will cut that tree down first, I'll read it to you. Well, come on, McGee. Time's a waste. Oh, okay. Don't you forget now, boys, I have more hot coffee and sandwiches here when you get hungry. Hey, I'm hungry right now. I'm so hungry I could gnaw this tree down. Well, don't be so eager, Beaver. <laughs> You just had three sandwiches and four cups of coffee. Let's keep working. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> ah, that's it, boys. Now you're making into it. Keep it up. <laughs> Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hi, Ollie. Hello, Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. You're just in time, Junior. Want to get a merit badge for tree sawing? Hey, Ollie, let Junior take my end of this song. Oh, no, 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 pal. Sorry. Can't stay but a minute. Mm. I wish I could have thought to say that, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> but I got to show McGee my muscles instead of my brains. Really in a rush, are you, Mr. Wilcox? Yeah, big Johnson Wax sales meeting, Molly. We've got a problem. What's the matter, boy? Needle stuck on your sales record? No, no pal. I'm doing all right. I keep telling myself. <laughs> but there's a little item we've got to make clear about that sensational new Johnson's water repellent, Gloco. Well, what's the matter with it, Mr. Wilcox? My missus uses Johnson's water repellent glow coat all the time. She says it works wonders. I do, too, and I'm so delighted with it oh, that I... Oh, of course you are. Gee whiz, it's marvelous. But a lot of people don't understand that all the glow coat being sold now is water repellent. It's in the same familiar container, but what's inside of it has got that built-in miracle. We've got to make that clear to everybody, that all the glow coat on the dealer's shelves right now is the water repellent glow coat. I got a simple suggestion to take care of that, Junior. Use new containers. Oh, not a chance, pal. Huh? That Johnson glow coat container is so familiar and so honored all over the world that changing it would be, well, like, well, gee whiz, I... Heavenly days, look. Tears in his eyes at the very thought. <laughs> well, gosh, when you really love something, you... Well, what I mean is it's the product we keep improving. The package stays the same. But, hey, look, you better get back to work, pal. It's getting pretty late. So long, kid. So long, Hilo. Bye, Mr. Wilcox. Well, come on, Ollie. Quit gabbing. we got to get this tree sawed down. My gosh, if you're going to do a job, boy, do it right, because I'll get enough firewood out of this tree to let... Look, McGee. Out of all this work, maybe you get plenty of firewood. But me, I'm used to donating my time. <laughs> Congratulations, Junior. Nice job. 
except for one thing. <laughs> well, what one thing, Mrs.? Oh, nothing important, except that it fell right across the road and nobody can get through till you clear it away. <laughs> My gosh, I guess we had better saw a hunk out of the middle of it so cars can drive through, eh, Holy? Well, don't say we, McGee. Say you. Huh? I'm already late for my dinner. Well, so long, Mrs. So long, McGee. Thanks for helping me with it. What am I saying? I was helping you. <laughs> Hey, Molly, grab one end of that saw, will you? And we'll... Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey! Hey, old-timer! Hello there, kids! Hi, daughter! Hi, Johnny! Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Hey, you want to help me saw this? I'd love to, Johnny, but I can't do it. Oh, you can't, eh? What's the matter? Got hydrophobia? Afraid of a little perspiration or something? Nope, Johnny, I just ain't in condition for it. Huh? I ain't no kid, you know. Doc Gamble says, no exercise. I says, how about a quiet game of canasta, I says... Okay, he says, if the other fella does all the shuffling. <laughs> no, I says. Excuse me, Mr. Oldtimer. Could it be possible you don't know how to handle a saw? Kids, I was engaged to a lumberman's daughter for almost 12 years once. Yeah? Mabel, her name was. Bird's Eye Mabel, we called her. <laughs> Used to take her fishing with me because she could see an angle worm at 90 paces. I was okay, out there. Okay, okay, okay. Stow the gab, old-timer. I gotta get to work. This tree is... Hey! Yes? Yes? Ain't this the old Jesse James oak tree? Huh? The one the boys were supposed to have rolled into town and hid some root under it? <laughs> ah, yes, but that story has been pretty well exploded, Mr. Oldtimer. Himself here dug up about four acres around it, and you know what he found a couple of hundred of? What, daughter? Roots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that Jesse James stuff is a lot of mahula. That Rock Island train robbery was in 1873, when this tree was just a sap head. Uh, sapling. Yeah, I mean sapling. <laughs> I'm just self-conscious, I guess. I don't know about that, Johnny. This was a pretty old tree, and when I asked Jesse James about it, he said... Wait a minute, was... wait a minute. You knew Jesse James? Like a brother, daughter. Yeah? Never forget the time I and Jesse and Frank held up the bank in Cairo, Illinois. Got $36,000. My share was twelve. My gosh, twelve thousand dollars. Nope, twelve dollars. All I done was hold the horses. <laughs> well, sir, how's it come? Banging and shooting and hollering? Let's go, boys, yells Jesse. So I leapt onto my horse, dug in the spurs, and he bucked me off right into the window into the bank again. I would forgot to unhitch him. <laughs> How did you get out of that one? My quick thinking, daughter. I slaps my twelve dollars down on the counter and says... I want to open a Christmas savings account. <laughs> Another time, me and Jesse was... Oh, excuse me, daughter. You can't handle that saw with me in the way there, can you? I certainly can. Come on, McGee. Grab the other end. Well, as I was saying, another time, me and Jesse was galloping for a shower holder in the air. The King's Man, and I said my pajamas and put on my prayers. My baby kissed me goodnight, and I am glad to relate. By the time I got me back home, I was feeling great. I climbed up the door and opened the stairs, said my pajamas, put on my prayers, turned off the bed and crawled into the light. And all because you kissed me goodnight. When I awoke, I scrambled my shoes. Shined up an egg, then I toasted the news. I buttered my pie and took another bite. And all because you kissed me good night. By evening I felt normal, so we went out again. You said good night and kissed me. I hurried home and then I climbed up the door and opened the stairs. Said my pajamas to put on my prayers. I turned off the bed. Crawled into the light, and all because you kissed me. Good night. I hung me on a chair and put my fancy shirt to bed. I scratched my breakfast pancakes and poured syrup on my head. I caught the door and slammed the bus and ran a little ways. I punched the boss and then I asked the time clock for a raise. By evening I felt normal, so we went out again. You said good night and kissed me. I hurried home and then. Climbed up the door and opened the stairs. Said my pajamas, put on my prayers. 
turned off the bed, crawled into the light, all because you went and kissed me. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> My, that's hard work, McGee. Let me rest a minute, will you? Yeah, sit down a while, kiddo. This job would go a lot faster if you had somebody on the other end of that saw with you, too. <laughs> if I hadn't pulled that Charlie horse in my back to put You're me... sweet, dearie, but save your breath. Your turn is coming up. Mm. If you get another Charlie horse, maybe you can hitch them both to this ten-ton brush pile and drag it out of here. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. Next time anybody talks me into chopping down this big a tree that I can cut it up into enough firewood to last us all winter, I'll burn coal. <laughs> By George, I wouldn't... Oh, here comes the trivia. Yes, and Dr. Gamble. Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to the McGee Posthume and Fuel Company. Hello, 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 hello. Hi. Now, if you guys got any smart remarks about how I ought to climb back in the tree with the rest of the squirrels, <laughs> just save it. I'm in no mood. I had no such comment in mind. Did you, Doctor? Oh, not at all, Mr. Mayor. Just because McGee here happens to get into more stupid, ridiculous, impossible messes than any human being we know is no reason for anyone to claim that he's a human being. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Well, it's too bad it had to come down, isn't it? The city hates to lose this historic old Jesse James tree, McGee. Well, they don't have to lose it, trivia. They can have it right now. Matter of fact, McGee, I asked the street department to send a removal crew out here to haul it away. They'll be along soon. Well, thank goodness. I don't know why the city wants it, though. There's enough dead wood in the administration as it is. <laughs> oh, nothing personal, Latriv. Nothing personal. Thank you. You know, this whole thing reminds me of a very amusing incident that occurred during my youth. Really, La Trivia? Uh, yes. Yes, we had a few yew trees on our property, and one of them died. Oh? My brother Hugh went out with an axe to chop down the dead tree. If his axe was as dull as your story, Biggie. Huh? Go ahead, La Trivia. I'm fascinated. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I followed him out and called out, you who hew did you hew the you? Don't stew, replied Hugh. I'll hew the you, but this you is such a huge you, and so few yous are this hue of blue that I hesitate to hew such a true blue you. <laughs> well, sir, if you knew Hugh like I know you, you'd know why Hugh couldn't hew through the you. I'm through. <laughs> Phew. Uh, isn't that amusing? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Very good. <laughs> Reminds me of a similar occurrence of trivia. One that happened to my sister B, my cousin Lee, and me. We three discovered bee trees. Oh, now, Doc, the bees from Lee's bee tree joined the bees from B's bee tree so that B's bees and Lee's bees and the bees from the tree that belonged to... <laughs> What's that thing, McGee? Huh? What thing? Where, Doctor? In that hollow place in the tree trunk. Over there. Huh? Looks like an old iron box. Oh, it? my gosh. Help me get it out of here, Latrip. What? What? It's the Jesse James treasure. The Jesse James treasure? The Jesse James treasure. The Jesse James treasure? Jesse James treasure. Hey, Jesse James treasure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand back. Give us a little room here, please. That's it, back. Now you heard the mayor, now stand back. Hurry up, McGee, get the box open. I'm dying to see what I it is. I can't get it open, Molly. The padlock is all rusty. Hey, has anybody in the crowd got a sledgehammer? Here you are, sir. I have one. Oh, thanks, bud. You always carry a sledgehammer? Naturally, sir. I'm the motion picture critic for the New Yorker magazine. Mm. <laughs> All right, all right, McGee. Open it up. I'm impatient, too. Yeah, get it open, Butterfingers. Okay, okay, okay. Look, McGee, an envelope, a big envelope. Yes, addressed to Frank James. Great, 
Scott. No, Frank James. <laughs> Why, of course. I'll bet that's full of thousand bucks bills. Hurry up, kiddo. Rip it open. Quick. Oh, let me see. Quick, quick. What's in it? Huh? It's a note. Huh? It says, Dear Frank, I took the dough with me. Meet me in St. Louis, your brother Jesse. Oh. <laughs> return in a moment. Here's what one woman writes about Johnson's water-repellent glow coat. She says, when I polish my floors and linoleum, I want them to stay polished, at least long enough to say Jack Robinson. I use glow coat because I don't believe any other self-polishing floor wax lasts so long or gives such good protection. And splashed water or tracked in mud don't ruin that glow coat shine. You just whisk them off with a cloth or mop. Well, the lady's right. Water repellent glow coat, the regular glow coat you get at any dealer's in the familiar glow coat package, now lasts up to four times longer. And it's positively water repellent. It saves work, it saves floors, it saves time and money when you buy the best. Get Johnson's water repellent glow coat. Ladies and gentlemen, millions of individuals and families in Europe are still in desperate need of food and clothing. And the best way in which you as private citizens can help relieve them is through CARE, a nonprofit organization made up of 26 top welfare agencies. CARE packages can be sent for as little as $5.50 up to $10, and the more of them, the better. Simply send your money to CARE, New York City, or in Canada to 73 Albert Street, Ottawa you will get a signed acknowledgement from the person who receives your package. Don't forget, there are ruthless forces in the world which make their greatest strides in countries which are hungry and desperate. And with care, we can help stop them. Good night. Good night, all. Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? When you polish your furniture, do you get a shine that stays bright and glistening for weeks and weeks? Or do you get a fade-out shine, one that turns smeary and foggy overnight? Recent tests of leading cream furniture polishes brought out an important fact. Of all polishes tested, Johnson's Cream Wax was the only polish whose shine comes from wax instead of oils. A wax shine lasts. Oil turns foggy and smeary when exposed to air. Don't be satisfied with a fade-out shine. Use Johnson's Cream Wax. <laughs> 